So these are the X and Z proximity sensors cables of which there are three wires in each. Uh, there's brown, blue and black. Okay, so there's a positive, negative and a signal. Yu Yong has supplied many, many meters of uh, three core shielded cable. Now I'm just going to show you how to how to peel this back easily and uh, prepare it for these connectors which they supply with this um, Queen Ant Pro version 2 and I've decided to use these, they're good little little connectors and I'm not sure whether I'm going to reposition uh, some of these some of the proximity switches uh, later so that's why I'm going to be using these so all you do, now don't forget it's a shielded cable alright so it's got like a, a, a metal webbing on the inside so you yeah, I'm going to be you've got to be careful but not too careful you sort of get a uh, you know sort of one of these sort of knives very sharp knife uh, and about uh, what inch and a half back which is uh, what about 40 millimeters back and just press down a little bit and roll it back and forth like that then cut your it bend it over and you'll reveal oh I'll just give it a pull like that and some of the shieldings come off with it. Look. I'll just pull that out so you can see what, what it is. See there's the, the metal webbing and you'll get like a silver paper as well. Okay, that's the shielding. So we'll I'm gonna get rid of the rest of this as well. Now some people like to actually uh, connect you know the shield in from one side to the other as well uh, uh, in this application I have never felt <laughs> I've never done that in my view there's no real need to um, although this is a signal this is a, a, a straight on off signal like a pulse uh, something's either on or it's off in other words, it's got power running through it or it doesn't. So, uh, my terminology, it's no, no need to continue the shield over to the piece of wire that you're connecting to. Anyway, so what you do then is get just a pair of these. That's all you require. You don't require anything. Uh, you know, too elaborate. This is just a, a five dollar pair of, you know, sort of uh, wire strippers and crimpers that you can get at any sort of hardware store. Uh, this is a very small wire, so I'm just going to go to about a quarter of an inch, which is about six millimeter back, and just squeeze and pull it off and twine the wire like that we're going to be we're going to be doing a process called tinning shortly which is uh, making this one solid piece with solder okay so see so you've got uh, black brown and blue this is sort of european colors where brown is the live black is the neutral so that's positive and negative okay and this could be american it could be chinese or japanese um so positive red black negative so that's your feed so that you connect these together all right, and the signal is the odd man out, right? So in this case, it's 
blue and, and yellow. So you connect the blue and the yellow together. Oh, that's the continuation down to the, the box. Uh, you know, as so long as you remember that oh, positive, negative, you know, this one that's left has to be the signal wire. Same here, positive, brown, black, negative, old man out, blue, that's the signal wire. Okay, so that's how it will be connected up in these connection blocks. So I'll just continue now and do the rest of these cables because then we're going to find out which pair belong to, you know, which axes then. Because I actually run these in pairs and then cut this in half. In other words, it was one wire doubled over, run through the uh, cable chain, and this came out as a loop. I just, sorry, I was telling you a fib. This one and this one uh, was, was run and there was a loop. And all I did was run it through the cable chain, cut this in half. But I know that these two belong to the same pair okay uh, so this is going to be one axis and this one that i've already done and labeled is going to be like the x axis label everything uh, um, you know you label everything and you just won't make a mistake you know for you to go trying to find out oh well what have i done where have i connected what to because there are quite a few wires. But if you're methodical about it, you won't go wrong. Okay, the process of tinning. Now, when you have um, exposed the wires inside and taken the insulation off for about a quarter of an inch, or six millimeter, um, these wires are very fine. They're like hairs. So to give them a bit of strength and something for the little screws here to bite onto and hold and make a good connection, you need to do a process called tinning. Now to tin these wires you'll need a soldering iron and some solder, you know, small gauge solder. This is 60% uh, tin, 40% lead and it's one millimeter which is appropriate size for this so what I'm doing is just getting a bit of solder on here melted and then just place the wire into the molten solder and just put a little bit on there and that's it that's all you do you don't have to plaster it on or hold this on for any great time because you'll just melt the insulation further back here. So a little bit of solder on there, touch it onto there, a little bit of solder, pull it off. That's it. That's all you do. You can do it as quick as this. You know, I've just tinned six wires. So that is the process of tinning and we've made it one solid piece. Like I say, to be able to connect into, into these. Uh, and you do this process with all of the wires uh, for the whole of the process. Every single wire needs to be tinned. So now we've tinned all the ends of our cables. We're going to find out now which pairs uh, are connected to which end. Obviously this is coming off the gantry. This one and this one. So that's already been fed up here. And this one and this one are down the, or coming out the uh, second cable chain, which is going to go down in through to the control box. So I've got my multimeter switched on and I've got it set at 200 kilo ohms. So 
So I've got, when we read a connection, it's going to read zero, okay? Although that little piece there is missing, I don't know why. So, we're just going to choose one of the black leads here and check here. Not that one. And it's not that one. Not that one. Okay. Okay, so that, that pair, I've labelled as X. Okay, and I've actually done this a few minutes ago. And of course then, these, but just to verify. So we'll go black again. Nothing. Okay, and that is verified as being the Z in this case, and I've just labelled them Z. So now what we're going to do, we'll switch that off. Now what we're going to do is get the Z. Um, this is the top one. Okay, proximity sensor that is. And this one is the bottom one. Okay. So what we're simply going to do is connect in. Can you see that? Where are you? Okay. So at this stage it doesn't mean it doesn't matter whether we're connecting at the top or the bottom or whatever. We'll just we'll do a test again when we're ready to connect it into the control box. So at this time what I'm going to do, I'm gonna nip this off a little shorter. Not these too long. But quarter of an inch is fine. These are pre-tinned, by the way, from the factory, which is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put black, blue, brown like that so it's positive on that side negative on this side and signal in the middle and we're just going to do that up tight okay and we mirror that signal in the middle red to brown positive and black to black. I can hold that and do up all at the same time. Yep, they're all right. Okay, so we've got positive signal and negative. So I'm going to do that now with all of the uh, connectors and uh, that will complete that little part of the project. Okay, so now it's time to connect up the spindle with coolant and of course the power feed cable. So we'll simply just unscrew these. It's just a rubber cover. Push the push the nut 
on like so. Can be a little tight. So there's a, a shaped ferrule here. Just want to make sure these are in line, not crossing over. We just push them on like that, fairly tight. Work the nut down. There we go. Just do it up as tight as you can with your fingers, and we'll put a spanner on it in a second. Make sure it goes on all the way till it butts up to the thread. And just tighten these up. No need to go any tight, tighter than that. One full turn once you've gone as far as you can with your fingers is normally enough. It's not under high pressure or anything like that. Now I have enough uh, hose here. This isn't a fully up position. So I've got enough holes here, so it's got a nice bend over, like that. And I'm going to run this. I might want to pull a bit more lead through, actually. So I'll do that right now. There we go, simply done. And we'll connect this on. It'll only go in one way, there's two there's two little raised areas there, in actual fact there's five all the way around, but they're too close together there. If you look down inside, it's too close together there. So it just shows you it's only going in one place, which is there. Do it up. Firm, like that. That's it. And this power feed cable to the spindle should be pretty well the same length as a little bit more. And I just realized I was zoomed in there and you couldn't see. So what I was uh, trying to say was that uh, you know these this electrical feed cable to the spindle needs to be the same length as your coolant lines so they can run together and I can zip tie these up together this is in the fully up position so I know I have enough um, pipe and cable there and uh, I, I like it to be flexed away from and not touch anything at all so it has a free movement and there's no chafing of pipe work or, or cables um, so I'm going to tidy all this up now and, and zip tie it up for the time being and um, I'm going to pull the, you know, whatever is spare through and, and down and we'll put the cable in through to where the control box is going to be.